Hey there everyone, I am Julie Ranasaurus from EverydayVeganGourmet.com and today I'll be sharing with you a really easy pumpkin cheesecake alternative to a regular ice cream. Instead today we'll be making pumpkin cheesecake flavored banana and ice cream. What is banana and ice cream you may be asking? Well if you're unfamiliar with it, it's basically a really healthy version of ice cream made from bananas that we're going to freeze up and instead of using an ice cream maker, we use a food processor or if you have a really great blender like a Vitamix, you can use that instead. So in today's recipe video, I have been inspired by the whole fall season and so I wanted to make a pumpkin cheesecake version of a banana and ice cream and so that's what we'll be doing. If you have yet to subscribe, please make sure that you do so and hit the little ring bell when you do so you get notified of when the heck my next video comes out. Multiple recipe videos are coming to you every week here on YouTube and also on my blog at everydayvegangourmet.com and on Instagram at everydayvegangourmet and Facebook page at everydayvegangourmet. Hokey dokey, so now to get started, let's start off with the ingredients for making the cheesecake additive for our banana and ice cream. So these are the things that you will need. One fourth cup of all-purpose flour. Just make sure that you microwave it first for about 30 seconds before you use it in the recipe. Half a cup of cane brown sugar. One fourth teaspoon of pumpkin spice. Three fourths teaspoon of cinnamon. One fourth cup of pumpkin spice butter cold which if you have not made this recipe yet, I will leave the link right up here for you to make it yourself. And one third cup plus two tablespoons of vegan cream cheese. So in a medium sized bowl, you're just going to combine everything together except for the cream cheese, leave that out until later, and combine everything together with a fork until you get about half of the mixture is combined and yet the other half of the mixture is still powdery. Now it's time to add in the cream cheese. So now you add in one third cup of the vegan cream cheese, stir it all in, get it nice and combined. Here I'm using Go Veggie cream cheese alternative. It's a vegan coconut oil based cream cheese. This one's okay, but every time I've gotten it, it does tend to be more on the soft side. So other good vegan alternatives to cream cheese would be Tofuti brand or Daya, or I'm sure there are other brands in your local health food store in the cream cheese section for vegan things. So after a little bit, it's hard to stir with the fork, so grab you a rubber spatula and get everything nice and combined. This is what it looks like when it's done. And now I'm just going to add two more tablespoons of the vegan cream cheese, one tablespoon at a time, just to swirl it in so that we get a nice white color to go with our cheesecake additive, so it does look like the whiteness of cheesecake. So now that that's all done, let's set it aside. Put it inside of your freezer, inside of a freezer safe bowl, while we make our banana and ice cream. The ingredients for our banana and ice cream include one teaspoon of vanilla extract, half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, plus two more teaspoons of pumpkin spice reserved, one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon, one third cup of canned pumpkin puree, two tablespoons of dark brown cane sugar, and three bananas that you first top up before freezing and put inside of either a Tupperware container or I like to use zippy bags and this is how I do it. So you could chop them up with a knife of course, you could use your cutting board, but I like to be lazy about things sometimes and not have extra things to clean. So just get you ripe bananas. Bananas like this that have some brown spots on them. Make sure that they have brown spots, this way you know that they're sweet. And I like to peel the banana, put it inside of a gallon sized bag, and just squeeze it out with my fingers and then on the outside of the bag take my pointer and my thumb and just cut little chunks of banana pieces and this is what it looks like I do that with all three bananas and this way you don't have to get your hands dirty and be careful if you do have sharp nails that you don't cut through the bag when you're done cutting up all your bananas make sure that they're in a single layer you don't really want them to be touching each other or when they freeze you want an easy time when they're frozen and just seal up the bag, put it in your freezer. Freeze them overnight or at least six to eight hours. So now put them inside of your food processor, starting off with just bananas. Process for about 20 to 25 seconds until you get small little fine chunks like this. It's not smooth and creamy just yet, but it's little chunks. And now scrape down your sides with your rubber spatula and add in the pumpkin puree, the half a teaspoon of pumpkin spice, 
the cinnamon and brown sugar and process that all up until it's nice smooth and creamy for about 30 to 45 seconds yet again scraping down the sides to help out your food processor if you do need help and the time that it takes does depend on how good your food processor is or if you have a Vitamix I hear that they work really well so you can probably do it a lot quicker if you have a Vitamix and you just do this until it's nice smooth and creamy look how nice that looks that is a nice smooth ice cream texture and right here is soft serve consistency but we are going to put this in the freezer with dollops of this cheesecake mixture plus some more pumpkin spice so just get you a freezer safe container and put all of the nice cream into the container first look how nice that looks it's getting a little bit melty here, but right after making it, it's perfect for soft serve. So now I'm just going to add in another one to two teaspoons of pumpkin spice. It's up to you how pumpkin spicy you want this. If you don't want it too pumpkin spicy, only use one teaspoon. Or if you want it more pumpkin spicy, use two teaspoons. Just swirl that all in, get it loosely combined in there. Don't worry about getting completely combined. We want that flavor to be dispersed throughout a little extra. And now I'm just going to add in the pumpkin cheesecake additive into dollops. So take you two spoons and in little dollops like this, put all of the cheesecake additive into the nice cream. I'm doing this in sections, about one third of the mixture at a time so that the cheesecake stuff does not stick to each other all at one go, having it all in there at once. So just slightly swirl it in there so you have nice big chunks when you scoop it out with your ice cream scooper. Flatten out the top with your rubber spatula and continue doing this until you have used all of the cheesecake additive and then just flatten out the top with your rubber spatula and this is what it looks like. You have nice big chunks of the pumpkin additive. They're going to be nice and soft when you scoop out your ice cream. They're going to be super delicious. So now it's time to put this inside of your freezer and first we are going to need some parchment paper. So just grab you a small piece of parchment paper, put it on top of your container, and then close the container with the lid. Put this into your freezer for at least four hours until it's hard. Or if you want, like I do, I just like to completely freeze this until I'm ready to eat it. Most of the time it's the next day. And when that happens, it's going to be completely solid. You're not going to be able to scoop into it just yet, straight out of the freezer. So just let your nice cream thaw out for in between 10 to 20 minutes depending on how warm your kitchen is and freezing the nice cream first letting it defrost and then scooping it out really does have the sorbet texture to it of regular ice cream in my opinion so I like to do it that way and it makes it easier to stick scoopfuls inside of ice cream cones which I love to make parfait kind of ice cream cones loaded up you know those like king cones that you're used to getting at the store that are like dipped in chocolate rolled in nuts kind of thing well, I like to save some extra cheesecake mixture in a small container in the fridge. And when I'm ready to eat the ice cream and cones, I take a little bit of the cheesecake mixture, put it at the bottom of the cone, then put in a scoop or two of the ice cream, a little bit more of the cheesecake mixture, and more ice cream if it fits, and then just roll that in some nuts. I like to use walnuts, and it's super delicious. This is my version of a king cone and I think it's very tasty. Definitely one of my go-tos for ice creams that are very satisfying that you can eat in a sugar cone and also get walnuts because walnuts have those good omegas in it and why not eat it with things that are desserts and delicious. <laughs> And that is it folks, that's what I have for you today in today's recipe video. I hope that you enjoy this recipe. I know I do eating it, it's so delicious. I love the extra topping of that cheesecake in there. Whether it be I save extra for the refrigerator and put it inside of my ice cream cones or just straight out of the ice cream itself because when you scoop it out of there, even though it's frozen ice cream, that pumpkin spice cheesecake additive that's in there it's super soft, it's delicious and tasty, and it is my favorite part of this banana ice cream. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, please make sure to show me by showing me your thumbs, letting me know that you like this kind of content, and that, hey, Julie, go make some more banana ice creams, please. You know what, I can totally do that. I love making chocolate peanut butter fudge ice cream and peanut butter ice cream, and I've made vegan protein added ice cream, so delicious, so creamy. You would not even know that they're vegan and they're so much better for you than eating regular ice cream, which is a bonus. <laughs> 
And please make sure to hit the little ring bell when you subscribe so you do get notified of when the heck my next video comes out. No set schedule just yet, so you want to make sure the ring bell is turned on so you do get notified. Thank you very much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. I'll catch you guys later on my blog at everydayvegangourmet.com, at Instagram at everydayvegangourmet, and Facebook page Everyday Vegan Gourmet. And as always, hope that you have fun gourmet vegan cooking in your kitchen. I'm Julie Renesaurus. Bye-bye. <laughs>